In this video, we're going to discuss some basic sketching constraints and get to know the screen layout and the tools in Fusion 360. By doing that, we're going to create this simple picture frame that we can laser cut. It's basically three stacked pieces of wood and a small piece of glass to hold our picture in place. This will give us a good idea of how to lay out constraints, create simple geometric designs, and create something that's useful. By creating this model, we're going to create four different sketches, and we're going to fully constrain them and create different components throughout. We'll edit features like this fillet here, and we'll look at different parts as we continue our design. To get started with any project, Let's open up a new design. We should have a blank layout. I'm going to turn my layout grid back on to make sure that it's in the right place and put my view queue back at the home so I feel comfortable with where I'm starting. OK, like every project, I just want to make sure I go to Preferences and check all of my settings. My design is in inches, and I'm not manufacturing anything. So for now, I'm going to keep that in inches and hit OK just to make sure. Again, I'm going to turn Snap to Grid off, and this will make sense in a few seconds. When we get started, we want to make sure that we save our uh, project. So in order to do that, hit Show Data Panel and go through all of your projects. You should have something like this. I'm using the Projects Ongoing folder, and I've created a new folder for this particular class, and I've just created a Projects folder, and here's my picture frame that we're going to create today. Once you're in your folder, you can then save your object to that folder. And I'll call this picture frame video. And I'm going to save that. OK, that pops up in our cloud here. And our, our major project title is right up top here. We can exit that. This is our. Uh, data panel. So if you ever need to get to your projects or anything else you've uploaded, this is the place to do it. And that can come and go. Up at the top, we have our file menu. So we have a couple different options here. We can do new designs and new drawing. We can open an old document so we can also open different file types um, like importing STL, uh, CATIA parts, CWG, DXFs, other Fusion 360 parts, all kinds of different things. Here we can save as to a different format. We can export to a variety of formats. So if you drop down, this is where we can archive our F3D files, but also we can uh, put it in different CAD formats for other CAD programs. We also have the option to 3D print here and turn it into an STL. We can take an image of the screenshot in different formats, and then we can create uh, a couple ways to share our projects. And they actually have a built-in screencast, which is kind of cool. We're going to look at our model browser. And to get started, we're going to right-click and just put New Component. The first component that we're going to draw is the back. That's a simple rectangle. So we'll just call that the back. Press enter, and then you can rename your piece. And then just to rename the piece, I clicked once, and it allows me to do that. In the back component that we've just created, I make sure that it's active. That's the one that I'm creating. This allows me to create different models within one space, and it allows me to change multiple features for one thing, and then go back and change a completely different set of features for another object. So to create a new sketch, we're going to focus here on this sketch toolbar. Again, we're in the model workspace. So you can hit the drop down and we've got a lot of options. We'll start with some really basic options today. So to get started, we can hit create sketch and we're always going to try to draw on the X and Y plane. So we're looking at this as a piece of graph paper. So make sure that you select this plane here and you should get the top of your model uh, box here. So we're on the X and the Y and looking down on the Z. We're actually going to use the line tool. And again, if you just hover over any of the tools, it gives you a very good description. Um, 
and allows you to sort of see what the tool is about before moving forward. What we're gonna do is create the back part. And I'm just gonna roughly draw purposefully four lines that are not in any specific orientation. I wanna make a nice rectangle of specific dimensions. So I'm gonna do that with constraints. So to get started, what I really wanna do is look at a few constraints. A rectangle's properties mainly consist of perpendicular lines, parallel lines, horizontal vertical lines, and it's gonna be fixed to a point. So to start, I'll think about the properties of a rectangle, and I'm gonna make this perpendicular. I'm also gonna make this perpendicular. And that almost helps us, but I want to make this vertical, and I wanna make this horizontal. And now I've got a really nice rectangle here. I'm gonna hit the coincident and select this bottom corner and drag it to this corner here. If you notice, this line and this line are actually black. Those are fully constrained. That means that for this particular object, all we need to do is dimension it out. And the easiest way to do that is by hitting the D key and you'll get this dimension tool. Select the top line and you can drag it a little bit above. And that allows us to create a dimension and the picture frame that we are designing fits a two by three picture. It's very small. And we're gonna make everything a half an inch on each side. So that will make our final dimensions three by four. So press three and press enter. The next thing I'm gonna do is select this line, drag it out, and this is gonna be four. Okay. Once we start populating a few more parts, this will make sense. And if you look at our sketch, we have now fully constrained this rectangle. I've got a three by four inch rectangle that lies right on the origin here. When I'm done with my sketch, I can hit stop sketch here, stop sketch at the bottom, and I am now complete with this. At this point, I like to save my project. And you can change each title of the save or just keep it as user saved, I'll say back. So I know that when I completed the back piece, I saved it. The next thing I wanna do is create the second most complicated piece and that is going to be the insert. So there's gonna actually be a frame that sits on this back here for the glass and the picture to fit inside before we put the whole top frame. And that'll be easier seen here. If I take the top off, we can see that there is an insert piece on the top, and then there's actually a piece of glass. So I'll take the glass off, and now you can see we've got an insert. If we take the back away, this is the piece we're making. So we just made the back, and now we're gonna make the insert piece. So right-clicking here, we're gonna hit New Component, and let's call this the insert. So click one more time and we'll call that the insert. The outer dimensions for this are gonna be the same and we're just gonna take this in an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch total all the way around. This is where our parametric design comes in handy. To get started, we're actually gonna go to our back and click the light bulb in our model browser and you can see now it's gone. This allows us to draw in a completely brand new space and we don't have to worry about looking at our old drawing or interfering with it at all. I'll click new sketch and I'm gonna click that X and Y face again. And that brings me again, looking at our view cube X and Y. And we're gonna do the same thing. Let's draw two lines. And we'll draw two more. And then I'm actually gonna draw another set of lines in here. And there's our basic shape. Now we can put our constraints on. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna make sure that when I adjust any parameters of this outside, the inside will also adjust to the right dimensions. So first let's make our perpendiculars in each corner. 
And we'll do the same here and here and here and here. And then let's do our horizontal verticals. That's horizontal, vertical, horizontal. That's actually was locked in vertical. That one's locked as well. We have one, two, three. The next thing I'm gonna do is take that coincident for this point here and bring that to the origin like I did previous. And now those two sides have become black, so they're constrained. And here's the tricky part for this piece. I'm gonna take the sketch tool and I'm gonna draw a line from here to the edge, but I'm gonna use the construction line. So lock it onto that corner and make sure it's at 180, 90 degrees and locked into that side. Again, I'm gonna lock that into that side there and I'm gonna lock this into this side here and I'm gonna lock this into this side here and see how this square popped up. Hit escape to get out of my sketch tool and using the construction line, I'm gonna turn that into a construction line. I'm gonna turn this into a construction line. I'm gonna turn this into a construction line. I'm gonna turn this into a construction line. And that will allow me to uh, create dimensions, but they won't affect my actual model. So when I highlight over here, it's still a solid rectangle. Now, what I want to do is make these equal. So I'm going to use the equal constraint. If this is equal to this, they should be the same distance apart. And again, if this is equal to this, then those two should be the same distance apart. So now for the front part, we'll hit our D key and we're going to dimension our uh, parts. Our outside dimension was three inches and our outside dimension on this side was four inches. I so said we're gonna take a quarter inch off or an eighth inch on each side. So when I bring this dimension in, that's going to be 2.75. And this side is going to be 3.75. Now I've just created my insert plate. You can see that all around here. Those extra lines in there are just construction lines. They don't exist in the actual model or the drawing. They're only for reference and then they allow me to keep that equal constraint on the parts. Okay. Again, that piece will, in the final project, look something like this. All right, again, I'm gonna save that. And don't forget to stop your sketch. I'm gonna pause the video here. I'm gonna let you finalize your last two pieces. Your glass must fit within that insert. So make sure that the glass piece fits right within the insert. So it must be this internal dimension. The glass, can sit on the origin since we're just drawing it. The last piece is for you to, to play with the top. And the top, in my case, has some internal radiuses, some rounded corners. So I'm gonna go back to the browser tree, edit the sketch so you can see some of the dimensions and take a look at how I designed this. I will also include these files for you as you design your parts. You're welcome to change some of these features, but I did basically the same operations as the insert plate. And when I was done, I went down to sketch and I used a fillet and a radius of 1 8 inch to round over those inside edges. You're welcome to play with a few of the other tools, keep them square, uh, or create maybe some chamfers uh, or angles if you wanna add some design. To it. I made this thicker so it holds the glass in between and the insert plate here. This piece is going to be the most complicated if you add a feature. I suggest you do so so that you can have something extra on your piece. The last challenge for you, which I did not include, is to add something that will keep the whole picture frame standing. So. If we put all the pieces back together, maybe a stand that will go on the back to hold the picture frame up, that could be a separate 2D drawing 
or maybe some sort of hook or bracket. I'll let you get creative with that and we'll see what people come up with. If there's any other things you'd like to add, great. Just stick to the 2D sketches for now and we'll move into the 3D space. We're gonna take these 2D sketches and laser cut them if you're interested in that and actually build our full picture frames in class. If you have any questions, let me know and feel free to play around with some of the 2D features. Make sure that you look at your constraints and you lock everything so that it's black before you continue. If you have any blue constraints, make sure that you go back and change some of them.